Hello and welcome back everyone to Aqua Sniper, I mean Duel Masters on uh, PlayStation 2. And in this episode on Rocket Rabbit Commentaries, we meet Knight and the Water Monk. For your skill, huh. But I seek an extraordinary duelist. You could tell he's a rogue because his hood is enshrouding his face. Especially his forehead and his eyes below his cheeks. Yeah, Rebecca... Uh, no, there, there, there's a reason I decided to do Rebecca's campaign over everyone else's. Rebecca actually starts off with the second most powerful deck of any of the campaigns, and she actually has, to be perfectly honest, one of the cleaner campaign runs. Not the clean is, but one of the cleaner ones. Uh, and yeah, um, uh, as Pascodet is mentioning here, a majority of the monks are actually really, really bad. Like, they want specifically to cash in uh, a large amount of mana on their bigger creatures, so if they actually make it to the late game, they're really scary. But the problem with that, of course, is that, well, we're running an aggro deck, so the late game doesn't technically exist for most of our opponents. Most of them. Yes, most of them. So they want you to get comfortable using the same strategy over and over again, and eventually they're going to send an opponent your way It's going to make you... Think about what you're going to do in the next game. Ah, not not so much, to be perfectly honest. Like, it tries to do that on, on occasion, certainly. But, like, there really are only, like, two opponents that are, uh, that are uh, uh, so heavy into control that they actually counter uh, the aggro strategies. And even then... The downside of playing such heavy uh, control styles it doesn't really have an end, uh, doesn't really have an end game win con at least for the decks that they're uh, that they're using. Like Aqua Deformer is honestly a really powerful card if you can actually get uh, actually survive to eight mana to bring it out. But you likely can't because it's eight goddamn mana, and you know a majority of the of the game's economy is based around uh, shield trading. So yeah, you don't usually you don't usually end up. Uh, 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 being able to cast anything that's more than that's more than about six. Six is the top end for a majority of the decks uh, that I run, and uh, even then, I have to have I have to use the uh, uh, a very a very specific player steroid that happens uh, uh, towards the end of everyone's campaign. No crystal lancer. Ah! <sighs> All right, I have to explain why I'm uh, why I'm flipping out about Crystal Lancer. The why other reason are you why I wanted out? to run Rebecca specifically <laughs> is because Rebecca, being uh, being a uh, water duelist, specifically aligned with fire, gets access to a bunch of aggro options, and then she gets access to Crystal Lancer. Crystal Lancer is uh, is literally the best fucking monster in the entire game because it's a double breaker. It's relatively cheap at six mana, and it's unblockable. These three particular aspects mean that if you survive long enough to get Crystal the Lancer out, it will just straight up win the game for you. And it, because it's an evolution creature, does not suffer from su from summoning sickness. Which is fucking absurdly broken in this game. Hey, if we're underwater, how could there be a Stonosaurus flame flower? Yeah, Stone Sword doesn't care about you because it's literally a, a magma elemental, and magma, as we know, generates an air bubble around itself while it's in the deepest of parts of the ocean. Surrounded by liquid hot magma. Darn now, the, uh, we lost uh, the other shield. big reason why I want to run Rebecca is because since she's uh, fire water, she also gets access to Aqua Jolter, which is like it's it's weird saying that Aqua's got the two literal best cards in the game, but it's almost true. Aqua Jolter isn't really the best card in the game by any stretch of the imagination, but as a skill trigger, that's also uh, but as a skill trigger card that's also a monster when. Now, uh, that can be summoned on its shield trigger, and also being a liquid people, it combos with Crystal Lancer so disgustingly well that honestly, I'm, I'm I am entirely convinced that Aqua, that water specifically, is the best civilization at this point of at this point in the game's history. It's not even really all that close uh, of a competition, as far as far as I can tell. Like the only the real competition is light, and the whole reason that is is because light has the uh, light has a combination of a monster that is both unblockable and has and has better stats than a majority of the blockers in the game. So, okay, we, well, we don't win on this turn. No, we're not going to win on this turn because of blockers. I do like that there are specific monsters that are that are designated for blocking, and uh, 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 blocking causes them to tap. Um, it's technically something that uh, that ma that it stole from Magic. It's just an expanded system of, of Magic's uh, combat phase. But, you know, it, it's, 
it's very easy to exploit in this game is, is what I'm getting at. What's easy to exploit, I register, is Swarm. Yes, aggro specifically is really, really easy to win games with. Well, I mean, there's, uh, I mean, uh, sure, sure. Swarm is a subcategory of aggro. Aggro can also mean using non-creature damage in order to inflict damage on your opponent. Um, uh, what I, what thankfully, I, at this point in the game's history, there are no, there is no way to do that. Oh, thank you can goodness. inflict self damage. Uh, you can inflict self damage. You can uh, do restoration if you're running light, uh, either right or uh, either light or nature. But you cannot actually use um, you cannot actually use spells to inflict shield damage. So, or uh, yeah. or fatal damage either. That they I, are different. I think that's I think that's a good thing. I mean, the premise of this game is that it's not counting life points. It's counting direct hits. Yeah. So even if you could send the weakest creature you got, as long as it's not blocked and it hits your opponent, it takes a shield out and brings them that much closer to losing the game. But it also gives them an additional resource. It's it why I like the shield system. Your dueling style. It resembles another in your family. My family. My family. <laughs> your family is not important at this point. You must tell her of her quest. Of course, Rebecca. When you duel. Do you uh, as Pascal that mentions here, yeah, Rebecca's connection to uh, Re Rebecca's connection to her family is a plot Those point that uh, she resolves off screen. So, well, it was a plot point that was brought very strongly on screen. Is that her aunt is pervin on her? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't escape it. They could have put the dual box anywhere. They strapped it to her leg. <laughs> Recently, the widow tried to seize control of the temple. You know how about how about a backpack? How, how about how about one of those shoulder bags? You 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 you, you sling it over one shoulder. Trey, yeah, Trey. Yeah, she has a backpack even, and Trey's got a backpack too. In fact, I think Rebecca and Trey are the only two characters in the game that we see with backpacks. Yes, I can give you the first one, but the rest you must find yourself. Mm. Although we were complaining about character design there, um, what, the monk just sent us on a quest to go and collect nine different card pieces of a water creature card. The water creature card is King Ambergris, but uh, we won't see that until the very end of the game. Ambergris? Yes, Ambergris. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Widow. Rebecca, how nice. Wait, 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 uh, Jesus how Christ, the fucking suggestion in this game. Of course, Aunt Vivian, it was you. Come, show me what you have learned since then. All right, All right so Rebecca now we must duel versus... Aunt, uh, Aunt Vivian the Widow. I was going to say more. She runs a mono black okay. deck, and as she is running a mono darkness deck, it is ex it has a bunch of removal spells in it. Those are the only things you need to worry about, and she just put one of them in her mana zone. So we're going to win this duel. <laughs> the game is already over. Yeah, as Pascal mentions here, don't be scared of darkness. To be perfectly honest, darkness is just factually the worst civilization. Although Widow actually has got one of the uh, more interesting combinations of aggro and control uh, in the game, she ends up spending uh, she ends up spending her uh, her control options uh, for mana for a ma uh, majority of the time that you're playing her, and that is what happens when you attack with Mara Ooze. Marrow Ooze is honestly one of the better aggro cr uh, creatures in the game because it's got a thousand power, it costs one, and it's a blocker. But what it does not have is the ability to survive after, you know, you use it once. D uh, Darkness also gets one of the better uh, blockers in the game in Bloody Skeeto because it, um, it costs two, it's a really big blocker, but not only can it not attack, it doesn't matter what it blocks, it immediately dies afterwards. Darkness gets a lot of really cool shit. What it does not get is a, is the ability to actually play it because it's either too expensive or dies after or, or dies after it's used. Oh. And they are also the only civilization that gets any amount of recovery uh, in the form of uh, Ghost Touch. And like, Ghost Touch is a great goddamn card, but you don't actually want to run it with Darkness because you don't actually want to use your one your your one shot uh, uh, cards all that often. I did a small misplay here because I thought the Bone Spider was going uh, was going to attack me and die. Thing is, Bone Spider specifically only dies if it battles a monster. So now I ha now I have to figure out how to trade with that. Scratch Claw has got one of the best abilities in the game with Slayer. Anything that it fights dies. It's very cool. Um, 
The problem is it's a, a four cost it's a four cost creature that starts off with 1000 power and gains 1000 power for every for every darkness creature that you control. Meaning that it is extremely easy to block it at low power levels and just trade one for one with it. And being a four uh, being a four drop creature, anytime that you uh, successfully trade with it for less than four is a win for you. Simplify. Hmm. You'll notice that we still have our Volcano Don. We will be probably keep, uh, able to keep this Volcano Don out for the rest of the game, thankfully. Poor dude Joe, he got killed by Bloody Skeeto. Bye, Lava Lamp. It's a Skeeto, not a Lava Lamp. Yeah, it looks like a Lava Lamp. Well, Let's this is uh, she's uh, she's gonna cast a death smoke on our volcano, Don, isn't she? I really do like Scratch Claws animations, though. Scratch Claws animations are honestly really, really nice. A lot of the monster animations in this game are honestly really nice. When I say that this game does have the best production value of, of anything uh, on the PS2, that's what I mean. The, cre the creature detail designs and animations that they decide to put in are really, really fucking nice. The only problem is that that's where all the production value went in, uh, of the game went, and uh, it gets to be a problem every once in a while. Uh, I think it's about on par with Duelist of the Roses. No, Duelist of the Roses was not a collectible card game, if you recall. It was a chess, it, it was a battle chess game that uh, wanted you to think it was a collectible card game. But it did animate the creatures on the board, and it also gave everybody unique, you know, attacking and resisting damage and dying animations, all that good stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Are we going to lose this game? Because we're fucking I'm not gonna lose three this game. in the I hole right that now. I'm at, I'm un, I understand, Cloud, that I am at one shield. However, you need to understand that Widow is out of fucking resources and has nothing to attack me with. Well, I mean, she's got two creatures. She can't play Jack Viper because she needs to evolve it from a ghost. She can't attack me with Bone Ghoul because I have a decent defender out. She can't attack me with Bloody Skeeto at all. And, uh, yeah, from here, I'm just able to swarm her down. You know, fun, it's funny you mention what what her options are. I cannot recall the last time I played a trading card game where you were allowed to look at your opponent's hand without having an ability in play that says you can. You're not supposed to have the ability to look at your opponent's hand in Duel Masters, for the record. But the reason that we do is because, uh... The game wants to have multiplayer, like, specifically uh, couch, uh, couch Versus. And in order to have Couch Versus, they have to share the same goddamn screen. I mean, that, that so makes sense. So there's no real point yeah. in hiding things. That, that does make sense. I mean, Versus... Uh, I'm trying to remember. There was a time when I had to play, like, a GBA game. I mean, mind you, we were, me, my brother and I were using, like, that cool um, GBA to GameCube. Con converter that let you play GameCube games on your big screen. I mean, let you play GBA games on your big screen, so... I'm pretty yeah. sure we had a system say, Okay, don't look at the screen, it's my turn. And then I say, Okay, it's your turn, you can look at the screen again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, wor it works for the, uh... It works for the GBA strategy games, and it... And it but, uh... It... That that revol that specifically revolves a, a, involves a lot of you know honor between opponents and you know with siblings you can't always have that. Oh, I mean you can play the game honorably. It's just once the once the game is over, I mean then you can stop being honorable and just knock my cards over like a child. <laughs> Fire sweepers ground attack. Every uh, creature in the game has two different attacks. It has the aerial attack and the ground attack. Uh, Fire Sweeper's air attack is the small is the small puff of flame that breaks shields, and the ground attack is the as uh, the lengthy flame thrower. We've really brought it to a close one, and we got lots uh, of block. Nah. No, the game's over. Uh, well, no, the game isn't over yet. I mean, we still have to actually kill uh, kill it. Right. Time, but... Well, okay, we got one able blocker. Everybody else is sleeping. Man, and now we get to kill Jack Viper. Mwaha. Man, you really brought this to a fucking close one. I was worried for a little bit, but again, the past three turns, she's not actually been able to play anything, so... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Bye, Jack Viper. Jack oh. Viper is honestly a, a really good Darkness. Like, Darkness has a lot of really cool and good cards. Darkness. But they're too expensive, or, <laughs> they, need, or they need additional support synergies. 
Like Death Liger. Death Liger is a really cool double breaker. It costs seven, so you never get to cast it. Anyway, Aqua Knight finish off Widow. That way we can move on to the next part. Yay. Winner! You are winner! Oh, the indignity. Defeated by my own niece. Yeah, jump for joy. What did we get? We got Phantom Fish, Crimson Hammer, and King Coral. Get Whoa, the Crimson two Hammer. Are going into Damn it. And in the next episode, we continue on with Rebecca's campaign. Be safe, everybody. I thought Crimson Hammer was the card to get.